Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about Restasis. Restasis is a drug that is used for dry eye disease. It's been around for a long time. And as per usual, what we're going to do is discuss what alternatives there are, how does it compare against those alternatives, what does it cost compared to those alternatives, and then ultimately come up with our final review for the drug. We're going to base the potential alternatives off of the American Academy of Ophthalmology Treatment Guidelines. They're a widely recognized body here in the United States that helps establish recommended treatment guidelines for lots of different eye problems, including the dry eye syndrome. So helping with the diagnosis and then recommended management as far as prescription drugs or different procedures that could help with that condition. So as far as pharmacological or drug treatment options, they've really got a two-tier process. So number one, they recommend artificial tiers. So there are a lot of over-the-counter options that you can acquire. And essentially what these uh, drugs are designed to do, there are a lot of different brands. Essentially, they're just designed to mimic tiers. The second line options are grouped together. And in the second group, they recommend more artificial tiers and drugs such as Restasis. So immunosuppressive drugs such as Restasis, uh, Zyidra, which I already did a video on, and other drugs such as Sequa. And there are a few other options in there, such as steroids, but they're not used as uh, commonly, so we're not going to discuss that in this video. So how does Restasis stack up against the alternative? So starting with uh, artificial tears. So before we get into that, we kind of need to know a little bit about Restasis because it's going to help. So Restasis is a drug that's FDA approved to increase a tear production in dry eye disease that has certain characteristics where there's some kind of autoimmune problem. And essentially what the idea of the drug is, is that it is an immunosuppressant and there is this autoimmune problem that is causing a decrease in tear production. So when you take this drug, the idea is that it stops that inflammatory effect and hopefully will, will, uh, will cause tear production to increase or you know, return back to normal. With artificial tears, basically it's just designed to be exactly what a tear is, as close as you could possibly make it. So you're sort of trying to do exactly the same kind of thing, but with two different ways. So with restasis, you're trying to increase the production of natural tears, whereas with the, the other way, you're not trying to increase your production, you're just adding them from an outside source to you know, solve the dry eye problem. So is, uh, have they been studied against each other? Is one better than the other? As of right now, there's no evidence to suggest that one is better than the other. There are some, but that being said, there are some theoretical things that are not mentioned in the guidelines directly as much, but there are some studies that suggest that potentially stopping the inflammatory process of dry eye may lead to less problems long-term. But since not a lot is known about dry eye disease or dry eye syndrome, there could be multiple different causes. They Basically, there's not enough information out there to really help know if one would be better than the other in general or even in certain situations. Because even if you did a head-to-head -head study of Restasis versus versus a, a a a artificial tear, for example. If you don't know what you're looking for, as far as if there were different subtypes or different causes of the dry eye problem, it would be hard to measure because maybe yeah, maybe it does, maybe it turns out better, or maybe it turns out worse. But but if you maybe had limited it to just people with this specific type of, let's say, inflammatory problem, the results might have been different. So as more and more information comes out about dry eye disease and how it is caused and how to basically identify people that have this specific type of cause of the problem, it could be possible that an immunosuppressant might be better than artificial tears long term. But as of right now, the, there's nothing in the guidelines that recommends that, or the evidence is not as strong, it's not strong enough to cause them to change the treatment algorithm to say, hey, you should look for this, or you should look for that first to see if they have this type of dry eye disease and then give them this. As of right now, they still recommend artificial tears first line, but it does not necessarily mean that it is better, although some people might 
think that because again, you're solving the problem by adding the the draw, you know, the artificial tiers. The other way, you're increasing tier production, but in some cases that might not even be as good because some people produce low quality tiers and they evaporate quickly. So that's sort of with the with artificial tiers. As of right now, there's no there's no strong evidence to suggest one way or the other. And it's a similar situation for the other alternatives. So uh, with Zyhydra, for example, there's no direct studies. And again, since there's no, there's still a lack of understanding how the exact disease works in different people, it's kind of hard to say that, you know, maybe with this specific type of dry eye disease or this specific type of dry eye disease, this drug would work better than that one. No evidence to suggest right now. And the guidelines essentially reflect that. The last option that we're going to talk very briefly about is CEQA. And CEQA is interesting in that it's it's not exactly the same as Restasis, but it is the same active ingredient. So both of them are cyclosporine, which is the immunosuppressive drug, but CEQA is a higher strength than, than Restasis. And it supposedly works more quickly than Restasis, uh, which maybe is a benefit, but of course you're getting more of the drug. And more is not necessarily better. The best amount is the right amount. So stronger does not necessarily mean better. Faster does not necessarily mean better. Faster means faster. And maybe you get relief more quickly, but if you're getting more of the drug over a long period of time where that wasn't necessary, then it may potentially not be as good over the long term. So again, no evidence to suggest that one is better than the other. No studies have been done, and there's nothing that has made it into widely accepted guidelines that would suggest even certain use cases where one would be preferable to the other in general. Now on to the costs. Cost-wise, I got a lot to say about this drug, and it's not good. The, the cost situation of this drug, it's so bad that I would say it's pretty much not even worth looking into as an option, realistically, and I'll get into more of that as, as we proceed here. But starting out with artificial tiers, since they're sort of in their own class, we'll get that out of the way first. So first off, artificial tiers, you don't need a prescription for. You can easily get them for $5 or less, and even if you want more expensive brands, you're going to be paying $10, $15 at most. So super, super affordable. It's going to be hard to you know, compete with that price-wise. So we'll just kind of move on to Zyhydra and Sequa. So let's talk about Zydra first. Uh, Zydra, I made a video about that one already, so check it out if you haven't seen it, but that is the most affordable option when it comes to these type of drugs. Whether you have Medicare or commercial insurance, it really doesn't matter, or you're uninsured, you're almost always going to be able to get that drug at zero or very, very close. It has a very generous assistance program by the company. And no matter what class of insurance you have, there's almost never going to be a situation that someone is not going to be able to afford that drug. I've never met anyone who's not been able to afford it, no matter what type of insurance they have. There's a lot of different methods through the company or through tier exceptions or different means to reduce that cost to zero or very, very, very close. And even in some cases, if the drug is not covered, your insurance doesn't cover it, you can still get it anyway. So that is that is very going to be very, very tough to beat. So moving on to CEQA. CEQA is often a bit more expensive on Medicare. However, they have a program that is very, very useful for people that pay cash. You can get the cost down to about an average of $60 if it's not covered, if it's too expensive through your insurance. And $60 is, is pretty reasonable as far as a copay that you're just going to pay consistently. You don't have to worry about deductibles or other you know, funky situations. And whether it's covered or not, you're still going to be able to get access to the drug at a pretty reasonable price. So finally, Restasis. Uh, Restasis, there's almost nothing you can do about the price. If you've got Medicare and you're paying a deductible, you're pretty screwed. There's not much you can do about it. If it's not covered, not much you can do about it. On commercial insurance, their copay card gives you about 100 bucks. And I remember when this drug was about 200 ish dollars, and it's now $600. So if you got a deductible or any kind of high copay, 100 bucks isn't going to take you very far. The other thing is you can get this drug. So not only are you, so, so competing directly against CEQA, it's the same kind of drug, it's, just, it's cyclosporine, and you can get CEQA for $60. And versus Zydra, almost any situation you'll be able to get it for $0 very close. So 
they're getting completely crushed versus those other two options. But even outside of those options, this drug has been around for an extremely long time. And you can do a couple of different things too if you're dead set on the wrist stasis. You could, you could order it from overseas, since in most other countries, this drug is like $50. It's very, very inexpensive. You could order it, depending on what country you're ordering it from, Canada, you can import it from a whole variety of different countries at an extremely low cost, less than even if it was covered on your insurance. That's why like with Medicare, it just gets completely crushed. Uh, the other option you could do is you could get it compounded for, again, for a pretty reasonable price. It's always gonna be less than $100, I would say, but of course it depends on what uh, compound, not what sterile compounding pharmacies are available in your area, but you could easily get it for, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, depending on your area. And that's where, if you've got, let's say, Medicare Part D, in most cases, your first month is going to be at least five hundred dollars. Most plans have a four hundred dollar deductible. I can make a video on the exact math about it, but on average, you're paying over a hundred dollars in the best case scenario with Medicare Part D or any Medicare plan, unless you've got some kind of special plan where you're dual eligible or you have extra help and you're paying eight dollars or zero dollars, no, you know, no deductible. It's uh, this drug always comes in dead last. It's. There's almost never going to be a situation. It's basically the only way for this drug to be a reasonable option and competitive price wise with the others is it has to be 100% covered by your insurance with no deductible and the copay has to be about less than $30 for every day, of, you know, basically every month of the year. If either one of those things is not true, it's not the least expensive option. You can get one of the other options, you can get it compounded, you could import it, and it's always gonna be less expensive. So uh, for that reason, it just doesn't, it just, it's just not realistically an option price-wise. If you ever find yourself in a situation where your prescription is not covered or it's too expensive, go to our website at sustainmeds.com, complete the free consult form, Fill out this information. It's very fast and easy. We just ask for some basic information. Remember, the more information that you give us up front, the more quickly we're going to be able to respond to your issue. Complete the contact form, and someone will research your case and contact you shortly. Our final review for this drug is a one star. This drug has no advantages versus the alternatives, whether they be artificial tears, Zydra, Sequa, or compounds or importing the drug as well. This is the only country in the world, the United States, where someone would pay several hundred dollars for a product like this that has been around since 1980. It would, it's practically an act of God when there's a situation where this is the least expensive option at a reasonable price. I would say that it's just so ridiculously priced, and there's so little that can be done to help alleviate that burden, that it's basically not even worth looking into. It has no, it has no advantages, and you can get products that are so similar to it, such as Sequa, or getting it compounded, or just getting the same product, but imported from another country at a reasonable price, that why would someone want to go through the effort and time to look into getting this price reduced? Even their copay card only gives you $100 off of a $600 product. So if you've got any kind of thousand plus dollar deductible, forget about it. You could just order it from overseas or you could get it compounded at a very close strength or the exact same strength. I hope you enjoyed this video. If we can help you out with any cost or coverage issues, feel free to contact us. Even if it's on Restasis, if you're dead set on it, we get a lot of requests for Restasis. End up having to change a lot of them due to the price, but we can help you. So feel free to contact us. If you have any questions, let us know below. If not, we'll see you next time.